Today we celebrate Saint Demetrius, one of the greatest and most beloved martyrs of the, of the Orthodox world. He's the great patron of Thessalonica, and he was a, uh, a young aristocrat, uh, highly admired by the emperor. Uh, he kept his faith secret for many years, being a commander in the army. And when the opportunity arose, he made sure that the whole city was evangelized. Um, this is at the beginning of the fourth century. And when the emperor heard about it, he was very upset. And eventually, St. Demetrius was cast into prison. Um, he sent his champion, uh, to, to his servant actually, to battle the emperor's champion who was this great giant of a guy, uh, of a warrior. And this humble servant of Demetrius slew him. And St. Demetrius, as his servant, were brutally martyred. St. Demetrius was uh, uh, taken down to the baths, into the basement of actually what's currently the cathedral over, over his relics, where he was stabbed with swords. St. Demetrius soon began to gush mud. And there have been, and still continues to be, myrrh that comes forth from his holy relics. Huge amounts of myrrh. Now in Thessalonica, St. Demetri Demetrius is much beloved. He was, uh, he's understood to be the great patron of the city. On his feast day, uh, they shut down the entire town. Uh, there's a procession of his relics, with his relics, through the streets with tens of thousands of people. The whole town, the whole city turns out. It's the second largest city in Greece. And there's a festal liturgy, of course, in the cathedral. The one, uh, the one time I was there for that, there were 25 bishops serving together. And so, and there were so many people packed into this cathedral, you could barely get near, you could barely get near it. Now that cathedral was built in the fourth century. And um, it's, uh, it's quite a thing to behold. But St. Demetrius is, is not just significant as a great martyr who had been uh, responsible for the conversion of many, of many people. He not only is a miracle worker for, uh, for the myrrh that gushes forth from his relics and, uh, and heals, uh, <coughs> has healed thousands of people over the course of the centuries, because he's been gushing myrrh for 1,700 years, if you can imagine. But, St. Demetrius, I think, is most profoundly revered because of the witness that he provided uh, by his life and by his death. He was one who truly loved God and was willing to give up everything for the sake of the confession uh, of Jesus Christ. In, that, in those days, uh, just before the end of the persecutions, but still in the midst of one of the most brutal under the Roman Empire. Christianity was, was something despised and hated. And St. Demetrius was, was made a public witness of his faith and through his life. There were no illusions at that time that Christianity was something respectable, that it was something liked and tolerated by the people. It was very plain that the, that the government hated the gospel, that hated God and hated Christ, uh, and wanted only their own pagan gods, which basically was an excuse for licentiousness. But we need also to be aware in our own day that as hundreds of people are murdered every week 
for the, in the name of Jesus Christ for the sake of the gospel. Uh, throughout the Middle East, and especially in Iraq and Syria, how that that witness uh, by people who are willing to give up everything, including their own lives, not just their livelihood, not just their possessions, not just their uh, social position, not just their, uh, not just their money, but are willing to give up their lives for the confession of Jesus Christ. In the last century was a century of, of the great martyrs and confessors of Russia and Eastern Europe under the communist yoke. In this century, it once again, as it has been for 1,400 years, almost nonstop, confession of the faith in Jesus Christ, of those who are under the Islamic yoke. <coughs> we should have, we can have no <coughs> illusions, no illusions whatsoever, that the world loves us, that the world loves the gospel, that the world loves the church, that it thinks it's a, it's a, it's a good thing. The reality is, the world hates it because it's a challenge to it. It's a challenge to its leadership. It's a challenge to its, to its domination of, of, our, of our thoughts and our minds and our hearts. It's a challenge to its values. And it's a challenge because whether we are doing so or not, the world feels judged by us because we strive to keep the discipline of the moral life and that makes them feel guilty and thus they hate us. It would be so nice to think that, oh, in our nice liberal society, that Christianity is something that uh, is warmly tolerated. But I think in reality it's something barely tolerated. And the more that we, the more that we see how our society reacts, the more that we see the revelation of the true spirit of this world which is what our society ultimately, and every earthly society, embodies. That this world is an end in itself. That money and position and power are ends in themselves. And that uh, this life is all that there is and is an end in itself. <coughs> and to challenge that, despite the fact that there are many people still bear faith and still bear that hope of immortality, how many more have been, have been <coughs> allured by secularism and by, the, uh, by ultimately its false salvation through wealth and human happiness. <coughs> that false salvation, which is nothing else than the Antichrist working its way through our society. That spirit of Antichrist is always with us, it always has been with us, and is certainly making its, making its presence felt. We see that particularly in the witness borne by the, by the faithful Christians in Syria, in Iraq, in Lebanon, in Palestine, in Egypt, and, uh, and throughout the Middle East. <coughs> so brothers and sisters, we have to be, as the church constantly exalts the martyrs, 
And if you pay attention to the church's calendar, if you just look every day, there are dozens of martyrs that are commemorated every day in the church year. Every day. We also have to be mindful of that martyrdom to which we are called. Maybe not a martyrdom of blood, but a martyrdom of the witness of our lives for the integrity of the gospel and the message of Jesus Christ, which is the only thing that can provide hope in, the, in this dark and brutal world, which is governed by hatred and jealousy and envy. That darkness of the passions which society lives in. And that we can show people through our lives, through our hope, through our faith, that there is another way that may not lead to earthly gratification, but it's a way that leads to true joy in the Holy Spirit, in being free to offer all that we have and all that we are to God as a gift of his love and as a gift of our love in thanksgiving to him for all that he has given to us. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and into ages of ages. Save us, for he is good and loves mankind. 